Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, good people? This is MC Till of Everybody's Hip Hop, co-author of the Boom Bap Review, and of course, uh, a co-host here in the Boom Bap chat. Very excited tonight. This is episode 63, and we have an incredible, incredible artist in the building. We're going to introduce him in just a second. If you're in Cincinnati, please, please make sure you head over to Pleasant Ridge, everybody's records has been putting it down for years showing love to the hip-hop community so we try to show them love back they have vinyl uh hip-hop cds vinyl tapes i, I got a couple of john robinson albums from that store so they support really dope hip-hop so make sure you support them also uh if you don't have your copies yet of the boom bap review we got volume one from last year and uh let's see let's see what we got here volume two right here volume three is coming soon but if you don't have these if you don't know about these you can go to boombapreview.com read about them and get a copy uh at your earliest convenience please in the room tonight on the boom bap chat as always we have profound with the wu-tang in the background what's up profound what's good till how you be bro man i'm good tonight man i'm excited about our guests uh we also yeah. have io mas marad what's up io Yo, peace world how y'all doing doing good my friend no doubt, and no doubt. Lurking in the background, our co-host Neville is here. What's up, Neville? Malcolm had a dream. <laughs> Martin had a dream. <laughs> you always have something good for us, Neville. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, thanks for being here. Uh, our guest tonight has been putting it down for many, many, many years. When I got hip to him, I was like, oh, man, this, this cat is of, of the De La Tribe, native tongue type vein. I love this. His voice is one of the best voices in hip hop. He always has something thoughtful to say, something challenging to say. He makes music that you can listen to on the first listen and just grew to it and enjoy it. And then you can come back to it again and again and again and get nuggets and jewels. And so it's music that's dope on first listen and it grows on you, which is not easy to do, but he pulls it off effortlessly every time he drops an album. He has a new album out, just came out recently, produced entirely by Blue King JR. We're gonna get into that and more. Please join me in welcoming the great John Robinson to the Boom Bap Chat. Woo! Peace, peace, peace. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. What up, what up, what up, what up? What up, what up, what up? Luke shot, Luke shot, Luke shot. <laughs> yeah. what's, what's up, John Robinson? Yo, peace, man, feeling good, feeling good. How's everyone doing? Good, man. Doing All good. Yeah, yeah, doing bro. good. Yo, man, we like to uh, show our guests love on the show. We like to uh, give them flowers, give them roses. And so I'm going to throw it over to Prof not Profound. I'm going to throw it over to I.O. Moss tonight uh, to do just that. So I.O. Moss, take it away, man. Man, uh, Brother John Robinson, man, what more can I say? I, I what, It's like I'm a huge, not only a fan, but I'm a, you're like one of my teachers when it comes to like emceeing and um, the way you approach your music and just your maturity and just, you know, the things like like uh, Till said, the things that you say in your songs is so insightful. Um, Cause I got some quotables from the album just today. I was just like, just listening to it, man. So I just want to thank you, man, for just being a leader to me, um, being a teacher for me. Um, just showing me how to be an MC and how to like really work on my craft to perfect my craft. You do have the best voice in hip hop, I believe. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You cannot wow. miss, you know, you cannot say, as soon as you hear your voice, you know it's John Robinson, you know what I mean? So I just appreciate you for that. The work that you do in the schools, I appreciate you for this book. Um, and like, like I always say, like a lot of my MC, my favorite MCs are educators or they like work in the community um, and they work with young people and the youth. And that's mm. why I'm on this path right now. Um, attempt, you know, on this journey to get my PhD, you know what I'm saying? And this book is definitely on my, my list for my, to write my dissertation, you know what I'm saying? Amazing. So I just want to say thank you for that. Um, thank you for the science of life. Um, you getting down with one of my favorite producers, Jay Rawls, like y'all, y'all relationship and the music that y'all put out together. Um, man, it's just so many accolades that I can give you, man. I just want you to know that coming from a cat from the South side of Chicago, man, I really respect you. Um, I really got love for your work. And I just pray that you'll continue to keep doing what you're doing, man, because you are like a light, you lighten the way. You like one of the leaders. 
with the torch and we following. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you, man. I really do. Thank you, man. Thank Much you. respect and love. Well. Man. Thank, so, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, man. John Robinson, are you in the classroom now teaching? Currently, or, or, no. You were uh, in the classroom at one time. I was yeah. in the classroom, awesome. yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what that's what gave me the um the intel to be able to co-write a book like that, you know. It was really um all of those years of the failures and the triumphs and the learning that allowed me and you know pursued into wanting to share these findings with other educators. And a lot of it was me recognizing that I couldn't do that same thing without being the hip hop self that I was before that happened. You know, that's what gave me the lens and perspective to really have this innovative approach and this way of thinking in the classroom and very much related to being on stage and connecting with strangers, name a place in the world, but you have to engage these strangers, I guess, for the differences you're working with students consistent and repeatedly. So there's leverage with that. At shows, you're not always in front of people who know you. So it's like, you know, a lot of these uh, things that cross and connect and align with each other. So, you know, I'm sure we'll get into it more, but definitely um, a lot of that information, intel, uh, case study comes from being in the classroom and teaching my younger selves, really. <laughs> That's what it you know? is. Yeah. 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 Now, I know when that book came out and the company album with it that, you know, you and Jay Rawls did, we had you and Jay Rawls on the show back then. Yes. And we were talking about it. it was really, really pretty fresh back then. So it's been a little while. Mm -hmm. What's what's been happening with that book um, since then? It's a great question, man. Um, really? I just said this to Rawls earlier this morning. We had a, a con phone conference and I said, yo, man, it's incredible. This book came out two years ago and it's really just starting to blossom and do what we knew it was supposed to do, mm -hmm. which was, you know, of course, have this front facing presence, our hip hop, you know, fan base, et cetera, kind of see it for what they see it for their parents out there who could take it in and, you know, um, activate with it. There are other educators in our network, but what we knew and wanted it to do was create this pathway behind the scenes, working with teachers, working with administrators in these front facing ways. But because of last year and a half, it developed a whole digital remote way of connecting and professional development situations with teachers and administrators particularly. And uh, this time has afforded us to create from the book an online course that we'll be launching this school year for teachers, administrators, coaches, whoever you are engaging with young people and just looking for insight and perspective to tap in and really engage young people in a different way, but build relationships for real that are meaningful and you know, have you this window into young people's culture and see their value. So yeah, I'll answer that by saying the online course is coming um, we'll have an audio book version um, coming as well this school year, and also a companion book for this book that provides a lot of activities that teachers mm -hmm. can try and activate um, with a lot of the mindset. And one of our goals, you know, I'll put out there is moving towards how do we, how do we show teachers how to tap into that mindset and really fish instead of giving them activity ideas one by one how do you just zone in and you know tap into that mindset legit and be there all the time and that's probably the most challenging part because if you're not of the culture you know if you don't truly understand the nuances and fabric of the community and culture that your students live in and are from 
then you can't ever get there. So there's a lot of work and a lot of layers it takes depending on who you are as an individual. Yeah. And I think for teachers, educators, if you're listening, um, that's where it starts. It starts with that self-actualization, mm -hmm. you know, like, are you that self-reflection? Who are you yeah. as an educator? Do you empower yourself? Do you read and study to get better? Or do you just do your job, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I like I like one of the things I really love about the book because my work is basically um, my work is how do we use hip hop as a way to put it in the hands of young people so they could be so they could be activists and change. Maybe they're in a school that's oppressive, or maybe they're in a system that's oppressive or a community that's oppressive, and they want to change things. How do we use hip hop as a leverage to change? the environment and put it back in the hands of the young people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether that's yeah. shooting a documentary, whether that's writing a song, shooting a video to like Absolutely. expose the type of things that's going on. And um, one of the things I love what you guys promote in this book is the relationship uh, aspect mm. of teachers building it. It's not so much of teaching the young people, but it's that building a relationship with them and get to know them. Cause you're not just teaching the mind of the young people. You want exactly. to get to know the whole person, the whole person holistically. It's the holistic teaching, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And I was just telling some youth today, I did a youth, uh, I'm doing a leadership development for some youth in Detroit. Um, and I was telling them that the teachers that when I was in school, the teachers that I gravitated toward the most was those teachers that was asking me like, how was your weekend? What was going on? Like, you know, how you feeling today? You know what I mean? It was right. those teachers that I really, I worked hard for and I gravitated more to those type of teachers who really just cared about me. And it wasn't just an academic thing. So that's one thing I really love about this book and it's putting young people first, you know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. I think that's important when it comes to educating young people is to put them first. So, I yeah, mean, man. like I said, man, I, I really appreciate that. I'm gobbling this book up and I'm taking my time with it to like digest it and really, it's, it's on point, man. Like no so far, this boy is on fire, bro. So. I appreciate Thank you, it. brother. Thank yeah. you. And I'm, you know, I'm definitely open to build. And something you said that resonates in the space is um, the devaluing of your lens of what you just explained. Like, mm -hmm. think about how many times, you know, even us as adults, we tell young people, oh, you don't want to be an MC or you, you want to be a oh. doctor or your architect because that's just, and we, we're killing dreams. We don't know what that young person is going to do, Absolutely. what they get their hands on. You know what I'm saying? And then like, why are we devaluing a culture that literally fuels the world? Everyone's taking from it everywhere else. Yeah. And then we're saying like, you can't make magic from this. Of course mm -hmm. you can. So yeah. I, I totally think that's a very revolutionary and powerful lens to Legit, just put it in their hands. Absolutely. Give them the resources yeah. to activate and yeah. see what they do. Because yeah. let's also be real. To do this hands-on, there's so many layers of expertise that goes into each part of it. If you're recording songs, you're working with software and you're working yeah. with other equipment, except yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot Absolutely. of mindset things and just skill sets that go into these things. Like, yeah. you know, even if you're behind the camera and you're editing or whatever it is, it's yeah. like yeah. all of it is skill set that lead into 21st century skills yeah. that yeah. you need. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, oh, absolutely. cheers Absolute. to that. Cheers. Yeah, to that. Yeah, and real, if, you're, if you're an educator out there, seriously, don't devalue hip hop culture and young people being stared to you know, wanting to aspire to be, because the thing is, you yeah, you just never know. And don't yeah. don't be a dream killer. Yeah. Don't be a dream killer. Let's be yeah. real what this really is. This is one of the most powerful things we've seen in our lifetime. Absolutely. And you know? it's still going. It's still it's going. It's not, it's it's still not going. ended. It's, still, yeah. it's not a trend. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's still going on today. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's yeah. bigger than music. That's, yeah. I, I always make that point. Yeah we're building especially in these forms when we say hip-hop we're not just talking about rap songs like it's way bigger than that <laughs> it's like, yeah it's so huge that it covers pretty much every facet of life at this point yeah i you like know? what you i know we go get to it i know we go talk about the album but i love your line in better music when you say face it 
there's obstacles that can't be erased, kid. Life is, uh, life, what do you say? Life is initiation. We floating in space. It's bigger than hip hop and looking cool. No longer smart to be dumb here. We, uh, I wrote it down, so I'm sorry. We, we, yeah. we strict the rules. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Straight yeah. lace, no crooked jewels. Feed the mass, feed the mass, I tell stew. Enough I'm healing food, food, cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it yeah. is bigger than hip hop. It's, it's much bigger Big than hip hop. Cause you know it's, it, I say to yeah. people all the time, we, we can't afford to just be cool no more. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. just, it's bigger than hip hop and looking yeah. cool, like, yeah. you know? You yeah. really, and I got to shout out my brother, Wise Intelligent. That's that's yes. his coined phrase. It's no yeah. longer smart to be dumb. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And yeah. let's yeah. be real. At one point, through, especially through the lines of youth culture, even when we were growing up, yeah. it felt like, oh, man, you shouldn't want to know stuff. It's not cool to know that much stuff. You a nerd. Da, da, da. Yeah. Then there's certain hip hop that ushered in making it cool to be intelligent. Nah, yes. you have to know Jews. Yes. You should know yes. who you are, know yourself, yes. Yes. know your culture, know your yes. community, and just have this whole other lens into the world. But um, but yeah, that's what that's saying. And it's really aiming towards those who catch it. You know, that's something I'm realistic about too. Like yeah. we were all young at one time, we all got all these jewels and seeds dumped on us, but guess what? You grow into them. You don't catch them all in that moment, you know. Yeah. But when they're heavy jewels, you think that, oh man, I remember my grandfather used to say, I didn't know what it meant, but <laughs> now I know what that means, you know, or my pops Absolutely. and my mom's, or you know, it's yeah. these jewels that you grow into. And that's yeah. how the music's approach, you know, till till hit it right on the nail when he's like, My goal is just that. I want you to enjoy it at first consumption, but I want you to unpeel the layers as you yeah. go back, you know? Yeah. 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 Absolutely, man. Powerful, 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 powerful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, in, in hip hop, when someone puts out a dope album, like I remember street teams going out, mm. all that. I feel like us, the, the hosts in this room, a lot of our audience, we're really big on the educational side of hip hop, teaching kids, being active in the community with kids. Um, no doubt. Is there, is there anything you would tell us or the people listening in uh, on how we could be like the book street team? Is there links we can yes. send them to? Or, I mean, yes. obviously we can just tell people about yeah. it, but is there anything specifically we should do to help get the word out about this book? Absolutely. I would say um, hit us directly on our website, itsjr.com, mm -hmm. I-T-S-J-A-Y-A-R-E.com, and we're on IG. It's J-R-Y-C-P on IG and the same on um, Gmail. It's J-R-Y-C-P at Gmail. You can hit us directly, but the book's available on the website. And as I said, this school year, we'll be launching both uh, a remote um, scenario where we're you know, teaching and doing professional development mm -hmm. just like this. Um, but also an asynchronous method where teachers can go online, educators, I should say, go online and have this online experience based on the book and the music, et cetera. And then as well, shoot, we'll pull up and come yeah. to your school, you know, and take yeah. you through these experiences because ultimately um, what it boils down to is it exactly what I am. I said earlier, it's like, if you don't get to that, connection and relationship part genuinely and authentically you don't ever get to the other magic you don't get mm. to see you don't get to tap in and really connect in this other way because you don't have a relationship with this person right you know it's like what gave me the audacity to be in this space for real is i'll say mainly is the multiple times i was able to walk into school buildings and build with the so-called troubled students exactly. and literally have a connection with them that's so deep I saw myself mm -hmm. each time and it was just like and then the rest of the school that's where the song how did you do that comes from mm -hmm. I heard that so many times how'd you do that you know what I'm saying and <laughs> it's great. like yeah and then I start to really reflect and say yo how am I doing this 
And then talking to Rawls, he's like, yeah, man, they writing up the students every 15 seconds. Those students come to my class and we good. Right. You know, and I'm yeah. like, what is that? You know, and then we started to make these connections. And ultimately, it boils down to four letters. C-A-R-E. Care. Mm, yeah. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Care. Care. You know, and that's what I would say. Uh, you know, if you're out there and you're in these spaces and you don't care, yeah. get out of these spaces. Yeah. For real. You're and you're you're practicing abuse and violence. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. even have to see your practice in real time to, to claim that on you. If you don't care, you're definitely practicing abuse and violence. And trauma. You're, you're and definitely trauma. probably the educator who walks around the classroom and threatens your students. Mm. Uh, in a way of failing, yeah. you know, and the reality is failure is lessons turned inside out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shout out to Shonda Buchanan. That's a writer, a brilliant writer I follow on IG. And she she put those bars up there. She said, failure, nothing but lessons turned inside out. And it's so real. You have to fail your way to mastery. Mm. You know? yeah. Really. yeah. That's how you learn. Right. You know, so that's really where we are in terms of just the mindset and the approach but mm -hmm. it's a beautiful space because i'm i'm proven and tested and yeah i had to fight through this space i didn't get certified and go through the traditional methods of being here i came here through innovation and revolution and evolving you know and things changing but also disrupting the space in a yes. great yes yes i so love it, i man. love that when you say disruption Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is, because yeah. I feel like yeah. the black students, because you, I know you heard the phrase that the educational system was not designed for black bodies anyway. It was yeah. never meant for us to be in those spaces. So for us to even be in those spaces and to get like what you said, the trauma and, you know, mm -hmm. being mistreated in those spaces, um, we, we, we just our bodies being in there in that space is a disruption. You know what I mean? And exactly. so we need those educators to go into those spaces and disrupt too as well. You know yeah. what I mean? And hip hop, using hip hop and YCP, which is youth, youth, youth culture pedagogy and C-A-R-E, those are the ways you go into the school space and disrupt those spaces. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So you have Absolutely. To. You have to. Yeah. yeah. And just really valuing young people as the culture creators they are. Yeah, you know? for sure. Like, to give an example, you know, I, I go into these professional developments and, you know, I'll show emojis and SMS abbreviations on one layer and I'll put cuneiform and hieroglyphs right underneath yeah. and say, why is it different? Right. And why? Because they're able to use three symbols and a few letters to articulate a complex conversation and we need a whole paragraph. <laughs> why is there less? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, why is there less? And then why aren't we giving them credit for creating an entire new wave of communication that leaks into not only the adults, but the global stratosphere, you know, I mean, literally where you're thinking, think about words like, for real, on fleek. That was a made right. up situation. <laughs> I want to say sis is from Chicago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, really, yeah. it came from a, a seven second Vine video. Young lady <laughs> from Chicago, 14 years old, just got her eyebrows done for the first time ever professionally. Yeah. She takes out her phone and just goes, eyebrows on fleek, and flips her <laughs> eyebrows. Four million people watch that in a few days. Right, right, and it right. heard, but guess what? What people don't know, Denny's tweeted such and such pancakes on fleek. Wow. KFC said something on fleek. Yeah. You know, all these companies were on fleek. Uh, tw wow. for 21 had an on fleek t shirt. And mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this came on from, and on. Yeah, this came from young. Yeah. That's her name. That's her handle, Peaches Monroe. You know? <laughs> but back to your point of putting these resources in their hands, imagine if Peaches Monroe knew that when she saw it taken off like that to trademark it. Imagine I mean, if she knew that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And although it did gain traction, I want to say she started a cosmetic brand and it, she's doing her thing, but mm -hmm. things like that, like I tell young people all the time, y'all sneeze intellectual property Absolutely. regularly, like yeah. for real, you yeah. know? 
we wouldn't be LOLing and OMGing and SMHing without yeah. youth culture. They created that. That's the truth. Yeah, they're yeah. the architects. Yeah. That's, and that's so important, man. I think, cause I, I, I was talking to somebody the other day, I was saying when I was growing up, they it was always young people need to be seen and not heard. But I think that's uh, that mentality needs to go. We need oh, to yeah. start putting our young people in positions where they can be seen and they can be heard because they do have, so they do come into the classrooms with social capital. You know what I mean? Like some yeah. teachers approaches like these kids don't know anything. And I hate that word anyway, kid is so belittling, like they're kids, like oh, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a phrase that said, do, do not let anybody despise you because of your youth. Like it's young people going through stuff that the teachers that's teaching them hasn't even been, hasn't, been, hasn't gone through. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, exactly. like these kids are growing up fast, man, in, in like certain environments where they living in, they growing up quick and they know a lot. So don't come at them like they don't have anything or they're not, they don't have any knowledge exactly. or wisdom or understanding because they do. Like why not build from what we think they, why not build from what they know already and then build off of that. But that only comes what you said to go right back to what you said is building relationships. How are you know unless you build a relationship? For young people. Exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? Nah, you're right on point, yeah. brother. Our, yeah. our youth don't need saving in that way. No, mm. no. You know what I'm saying? All. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're way more dynamic and next yeah. level than a lot yeah. of unfortunately their teachers could imagine. Yeah, and right. you're right on point too. To really ever truly know relationship, which would lead to Yo, I mean, go to the hood, go to one of the exactly. barber shops in their neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Go to the black church, wherever yeah. they are. Like yeah. whenever they're dynamic, in, go to the corner store, you yeah. know, like yeah. for real and legit, it may sound corny, but some of y'all need to take notes because you just have no clue and no perspective of what it's really like. And like you said, man, the average young person, uh, our young people of our community, come on, they're some of the greatest improvisers you've mm -hmm. ever seen in your life. They know how to make it happen and navigate Absolutely. these spaces with ease. So Absolutely. you think you think they don't know what you're trying to deliver to them? Yeah. You just can't tap into the touch points to communicate it well, yeah. to be able to allow them to see themselves in the work. Even us as adults, we don't see ourselves or some sort of interest in things. Yeah. We don't care about it. Like for real, we care about what resonates and interests us. So right. why would it be different for young people? Yeah. Man, this is, man, we could tell, we probably need to talk <laughs> offline, man. Cause this, I'm, I know man, we definitely you know, need to. Yeah, we got a bill. Cause I, you know, right. I, uh, my wife took me to go see KRS-One in Columbus, Ohio. And I had, uh, Jay Rawls was DJing. Oh, he signed oh, my book, you know what I'm saying? Nice. So he was like, I reached out to him, he's like, man, I was letting him know that I was in his PhD program. He's like, man, reach out to me, bro. Let oh, me know. Please dope, reach out. I got to yeah. stay in tune with y'all brothers, man. Cause I definitely like, we on the same, we on the same yeah. way. Man, and real. you know, you know how I know this is powerful. This is about the 10th time I'm doing a hip hop interview, right? And the book just <laughs> takes over. Right. <laughs> like this, this intel is like, oh yeah, you, you rap, but whatever. Let's talk right, about right, right, right. <laughs> You know, and, and I love it. It's amazing. Yeah. It's really amazing. Yeah, y'all did an amazing thing by putting this book out, man. Yeah. And the album to accompany it with, yeah. Like I remember, All Natural did that, but you know, it wasn't it wasn't on act, it wasn't on education, right? But that was still yes. like revolutionary yes. the way they came out with the album and the book. And no if you all do the same thing, come out with an album and a book, but have it focused on education and young people, man. That's yeah. powerful, bro. That's that's powerful, man. And I'm following yeah. suit because I'm working on a book now. I'm like, man, when it, it, I may put an album out with it. You know what I mean? There you go. I'm following um, y'all. Like I said, man, y'all. No, I'll, I'll, I'll say man. this. I'll say this on record. You know, I got bars for that too. I no got doubt. those EDU bars all day. Like, yeah. For real. So, like, for yeah, sure, this so. is, you know, That's what's I, up. I'm very passionate about that yeah. space, period. You know, yeah. it's a sacred space for real. For it real. truly it's is. Space, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, just real quick. I'm sorry. This, uh, how you good, you get, man? How did you get into like teaching? Like, how did how did that come about for you? Like, you so uh, yeah, great question. Um, yeah. Shout out to shout out to my brother Chen Lo. Okay, Chen Lo. Um, so this is a brother who 
I met true 20 years ago, literally Science of Life was touring and he was at Penn State. And, you know, it's, it's so amazing how all these things are connected, right? So I meet the brother while we're on tour and, you know, we had a crazy accommodation and we just saw the first brothers who looked like ALX and said, yo, can we stay with y'all tonight? They looked like, what? He's like, yo, actually, you know, we rent a whole house, so we got space. So we, you know, broke bread with the brothers and hung with them and crashed for the night and we was on our way to the next spot. But we didn't really stay connected after that. You know what I'm saying? You know, and I feel like I moved from Atlanta to LA. And then when I was back in New York, Jay Rawls was visiting and we're in the city and he's like, yo, I want to check out this spot. My man's DJing. I go in this spot, Chen Lo's on the mic. I'm like, oh, that's my man from boom. So we reconnect. Now he's in the city. He's actually finishing his master's. He was at NYU at the time right, right. doing his master's. And um, so we connect and years go by. I want to say maybe a few years go by. So I would say circa 2010, 2011, he tells me about this scenario with this uh, nonprofit org that he's working with that's doing exactly what you were saying, empowering young people around the arts. Yeah. And, you know, uh, creating music, performance, writing lyrics, producing beats, you know, uh, building content and camera work, et cetera. So I was a part of a dynamic team with him. And doing that, he told me about this other scenario. He said, yo, man, I'm also working with this scenario that's very unique and very revolutionary where we're, we're pretty much building on a co-teaching model with classroom teachers, but our jobs is to go in and learn the standards, learn how to basically connect these academic concepts to pop culture references mm -hmm. to make it more palatable so that these high school students can get out of high school. There were a lot of super seniors stuck in high school because of these statewide exams, mm -hmm. you know? And that's where that song in chapter, We Ain't Failing comes from. Yeah. You know, yeah. just kind of really combing through that time. But I stepped into this and I got so good at it. It really was like, you know what? I want to work summer school. And it was amazing. I feel like maybe four or five summers in a row, I really felt like I turned summer school into a joy for a lot of young people. Where it was like, man, I ain't never had no summer school like that. You know, kept looking That's forward to summer school, like yeah. showing up 8 a.m. on the day, ready to go, yeah. you know. But that was my entry point in building with Rawls, who's been in the classroom, you know, traditionally through uh, the teacher training, et cetera, K through 12. Sure, at the time for about close to 15 years, and he was writing his dissertation. So he starts sharing with me these different scholarly articles about the space and the work I was doing. And then I'm realizing, yo, no one around me is empowering their practice. Like, you know, as I'm talking about these classroom teachers I'm working with, like no one's reading anything. No one's watching video and, you know, really going in and doing their own work. So I started to do that and really see things grow and blossom. And it just made me want to learn more and really take this thing just as serious as I do anything else. And I just begin to empower myself with more and more information and studying in the space. And uh, I remember the first time I met uh, Dr. Chris Emden, who wrote the foreword of the book, you know, shout out to Pop Ed. Um, you know, we were kind of tiptoeing around the book idea. You know, we and shout out to him too, because Rawls and I got on, on the phone with him or at Zoom and he didn't really ever meet us like that. I know he didn't meet me before, but we get on the Zoom, he logs on. He said, yo, I just want to start by saying whatever y'all want to do or whatever y'all need me for, I'm down. Yeah. And we didn't even say nothing yet. It was like, wow. But he it was the dude, power. Man. Chris Emden yeah. was a good dude. He yeah, large, man. but he humbled in a mug, oh, yeah. bro. Oh, yeah, Everybody man. I know that know him, they say he just humble, bro. Yeah, I got man. love for Chris Emden, man. I never met him before. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut your wisdom. No, nah, I was going to say, you're, you're yeah. right on point, man. But dude, the thing he said to me 
was, you know, because we were tiptoeing around the book idea, but I, I kind of was nudging Rawls like, bro, you're the P you PhD'd up, man. Like you validated. Let's kick this door down and write this mm -hmm. book. But then when it started, it was kind of like, er, like, yo, should we be writing a book? You know, we were hesitant a little bit. And Dr. Emden was like, yo, Jay, how many albums you got? I start thinking, like, ah, he was like, exactly. You wrote books. You wrote books already. Come on, bro. I heard you. I know what you're about. Since exactly. science, you wrote books. This is nothing for you. And yeah. when he said that to me, something happened in here. And, you know, it was like, you know what? You're right. You're right. It's, it's a very similar approach. It's a very similar perspective. Yeah. And once you have the outline and you know the direction you're going in. I mean, yeah. And then a lot of my processes, I don't write the book before I speak it. I speak the book first and then transcribe. Nice. Yeah. Thanks, That's a man. jewel. That's a jewel yeah, for yeah. these books. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, you can, all That's my dope. orators out there, yeah. mm -hmm. you got rhymes for days. <laughs> speak your book into yeah, existence yeah transcribe it yeah i heard yeah. Kara say that, that yeah. as a matter of fact he said it that night he's like man if you got a book man bring that boy to life breathe that boy into existence and it's yeah. I, yeah. I found it's, it's one of the best ways to write i know my wife is back in school getting her master's in special education for children and um sometimes she'll have to write essays and stuff and she'll get you know stuck and i'll be like well what are you what are you trying to say just yeah. tell me and then she'll tell me i'll be like write that you know, yeah, yeah. That's how you do it, you know, yeah. just no talk doubt. it out. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's great advice. Great yeah. advice. Great advice. Uh, before we transition into this this album, we I wanted to make sure we spent plenty of time on the book because I think it's really important. I think that, you know, having having been in education for a while, being in the classroom for a while myself, I saw how we, you know, so many, you know, schools were failing, teachers were failing, like we were failing. Yeah. The yeah, I think that you're, this book is so important, mm -hmm. and um, so I wanted to spend plenty of time on it and take our time with it. So, um, I also want to spend some time on this album because this album is super yeah, dope. So I want people yeah. to know about this album too. But thank you, man. Being in the classroom, I know for me was stressful. I know it, it as rewarding as it can be. Even the best teachers, it's like you're pouring yourself out, and I yes. I found that to be true also in performing and, and being creative. Like there's times where you just you're just pouring yourself out. Absolutely. After you've done that, whether it's through, you know, teaching or, you know, through performing or whatever it is, what do you do uh, to kind of find rest and rejuvenate yourself? That's an amazing question. Um, definitely, shoot, real talk, sometimes cry, bro. Mm. Like real talk. I've, I've gotten beaten up in class so bad that I would get in my car and cry, like, but not cry like, I'm hurt, crying more like, I got to figure this out. Like, for real, this is, it's, yeah. it can't be like, nah, I, I will not lose in a sense of like, where I'm giving, I feel like I'm giving up on myself by not mm. figuring this out. So that would be a part of it. Um, reflection, a lot of reflection. And sometimes the game tape. You know, if it's a show, I'm watching the game tape. Mm. You know, I'm looking like, oh, what you doing? Ah, oh, no, I can't do that again. Right. And I, no, I can't put that song after that song. I just don't go and da da da. And yeah, I'm talking too long right there. Or well, I should have said this. And yeah. you know, so it, all of these reflections. But I literally look at it like the game tape. You know, right. you get to watch tape. And then as it relates to class, there were times, especially with the co-teaching model I was working in where I would be filming, you know, certain things, especially activities and things we're doing. And if it didn't land, I would never blame the students or the young people, you know, we're the adults. If it didn't land, your show was whack. Go yeah. back to the game tape and come with a new method. Check the method, you know? Yes. So that was a part of it. But again, I guess lastly, I would say is study, research. Yeah. I'm not the only one, like you just said, I'm not the only one who has these issues with classroom right. management. Da, da, da. Yeah. Peep this jewel. This happened organically. I put it in the book. So I would have this attention getter or, you know, call and response. Mm -hmm. When I say mic check, you say one, two, one, two, mic check, one, two. And one day, one of my students was like, ah, Mr. JR, that's so old school. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I was like, you know what? What would you do if you did it? And she said, you know what? I actually, can I try mine? 
And she stood up in the in front of the class and she said, Red Robin. And the whole class said, yum. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> and then it hit me harder because I said, wait, 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 we're in New York. Y'all been to Red Robin? And it's like, nah. Then I was like, whoa. Because all the, that all came from the commercial. <laughs> That's it. And then it taught me, you know what? Yo, you're a teacher. You're doing these attention getters. Let them choose it. Yeah. Because they, they'll own it. They'll yeah. really hone to it more. It's their thing. They chose. Right. You know what I'm saying? Again, that's student voice. Yeah. Right that's there. crazy. Because I remember yeah. when I was a teacher's assistant, I would go into the classroom and say, if y'all can hear my voice, clap once. Clap. Yeah. Exactly. If y'all right. can hear my voice, clap twice. And I got tr I got in trouble. Like, mm -hmm. yo, we can't do that in these places. You're disturbing the other classrooms. But the kids loved it. Like, yeah, they did. you're not gonna do clap your hands once. Clap your hands once. Yeah. Like, and you know what's funny? <laughs> I used to do that, and I stopped doing that because all of the other mean teachers were doing right. it too. And I was like, oh, I gotta change yeah. it up. Y'all don't do it right. If you hear right. my voice, clap once. Right, right. right. Like, oh, it's like. It's like when corporate America takes yeah. the word fleek, it's like, exactly. ah, I can't use that word anymore. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> or, or the bell, right? I'm like, ah, yeah. the bell? Really? You yeah. ring a bell? I to hate that. I'm like, yeah. nah, I can't. That's like, no, that's not our culture. We're yeah. tapping it. Yeah. Like, yeah. we're going we're going to the, the call and respect, the talking yeah. drum somewhere. But yeah, yeah, we're not ringing a bell. I'm you know, not doing that. This I'm, is not Pavlov's, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, <laughs> we're not doing that. I love that you said that you know some days that was a you know a hard day that you would cry because yeah. it, it makes me think about um i think something that you said earlier about how like you used to be cool to not know stuff to be like act like you're dumb like that used to be kind of cool you know yeah, man. and like that's another part of it like oh you can't show your emotion you can't cry you know man yeah, up man. and it's like nah like life is hard and like life crying is, is a very healthy way to, to get things out, you know, and to kind of replenish your soul. So I'm really glad you said that. I think that's dope. Yeah, so, man. Yeah. No, that, that vulnerability, yeah. I feel like is important. And, you know, I, I would do it in private. I'm in my car, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. But sure, I still needed to do that for yeah. me. And it was more of fueling my determination to get better. Yeah. To get yeah. sharper, you know, yeah, to man. refine whatever these processes were so that these things would land. But what I found out too was one of the ways to navigate and connect with young people more was number one, finding out who they were outside of just their first and last names, you know, and what they looked like. But then also bringing my outside self into class, which Absolutely. in the education form, a lot of times it looked at as blaspheme. Like, I'll never bring my outside, the students shall mm, never know I'm here. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's silly because I feel like that's right there alone a connection. You don't have to rap or sing or dance. You could sew or knit. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Build yeah. something that, yeah. oh, wow, Mr. Such and Such does. Oh, wow. He wrote right. a book about business, yeah. you know, whatever. Right. But right. still, it's like bring your outside self into school and make these connections. Humanize yourself as the educator. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. thinking about this this new album uh king jr blue produced it uh shout out to blue dope shout dope mc blue. dope beat maker your first song on there is medicine and yes. i was thinking about music as medicine and i knit i went right back to when my wife had cancer years ago mm -hmm. and i thought about that summer going through chemotherapy and how music was such medicine for me that yeah. i would just go to the record store the one i shouted out earlier i would just buy music and when I, you know, when things were getting tough, I would just go to music and that was my medicine. What was kind of the the medicine for you in that song as far as what was the motivation behind music as medicine? Um, yo, that's a great question. Being being vulnerable enough and open enough to understand that I'm not boastfully sharing this content and these these expressions. I need to hear them. I'm 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 healing myself with this talk, this is positive self-talk. And, you know, sometimes even in third person, but, you know, I even tell a lot of my collaborators that I was talking to Tiffany Page the other day, the record we did, That Magic, you know, she was like, oh man, I listened to that song, Love Me, and it just did something for me. I'm like, yo, we're speaking to ourselves. 
You know, like this is medicine for us. We need to hear this yeah. from our inner voice out expressed and back in. You know what I'm saying? And that that's a big part of it where it's like, these are really healing messages. And when you write in that way, I think it's important to tap in and understand that this is coming from a deeper place. A lot of times I say, you know, these are channeled rhymes. These are channeled thoughts. This is ancestral. I don't yeah. even always take full credit because I'm us and any MC who, you know, has been writing for a while has always had those experiences of, wow, you go back and you're like, I wrote that? Wow. You know, and it's, yeah. 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 So it's, it's a very spiritual scenario, but that's what that means. Literally. It's like, mm. I need to hear these vibes. This is yeah. healing. That's dope. That's super yeah, dope. That's yeah. So that's the first song on the album. There's a little, the, the intro and the medicine jumps in. So I just okay. want to go song by song uh, mm -hmm. and go through these because I, 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 I got stuff to say. I know I.O. Moss has stuff to say. John Robinson, if you want to reflect and, and give us more, uh, that's cool too. Uh, also, if you have to go to the restroom profound, it's okay. <laughs> Send me a message. I got I to gotta run to the bathroom. You can have a body break. It's cool. Uh, <laughs> Put him on blast. Come on, bro. He trying to put it low key. He's like, yeah. He can't, help, he can't like, help himself, man. Like, you know. Well, what, what are you going to do? Just like leave? And then like, like we're, we're but, profound. But you know what, bro? Yeah. You know? This, is, this, this is a learning moment. You know, next yeah. time, just don't tell him anything. Yeah, yeah. just leave. Right. Yeah. And let him just wonder. Yeah. At least you know what he won't put you on blast like this. Man. <laughs> hey, but I didn't want to miss nothing. That was the whole key to the right, whole thing. Like, right. I didn't want to miss nothing because, exactly. man, it's absolutely incredible I'm over yeah. here writing stuff down like man i'm in class right now so. yeah for <laughs> real man drop uh, jr dropping all kinds of gems man. uh metis anything stick out to you iomas yeah i mean yeah the hook like mm. uh, john robinson is a hook master and just the the jewel that's in it you know what i mean like music is my medicine so heaven sent we blessed it to the break of dawn we rock on and on you know what i'm saying like medicine just like yeah it is like I, I have nothing to add to that because music yeah. is definitely and I like what he's saying like the self affirmation like our music mm -hmm. becomes our own self affirmation yeah our own healing when we go back and listen to the things that we do that's powerful man that's what's yeah up. thanks man yeah you yeah, like the sure. second you like the second because Master Ace said the same thing last week we had Master Ace on mm. he was saying that he's like sometimes like the spirit just move like, and I just get up and I start writing around. Yeah. The spirit mm -hmm. is that channeling, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And I definitely, that's why I'm at right now. I'm trying to tap into that. I don't want it just to be me writing, but I want it to be the spirit flowing through yeah. me to write these rhymes and these yeah. songs. So that's, that's yeah. definitely on point. That's definitely yeah. on point. You yeah. know, my best way of tapping into that regularly yeah. is like, the best way I could describe it is years ago, I heard uh, Mad Skills, or maybe a song or freestyle. He said, I don't get writer's block. I block other writers. And, mm. I was just, and that just like, you know, he said that. It almost made it for me. Like, I'm never saying I got writer's block. I'm going to just write through it. Like, are yeah. you kidding me? Like, yeah. how do you got writer's block? Is your hands not working? Does your mind not work, man? Yeah. Push through. Right. You know, and the thing is, whatever you paint on the canvas, you don't have to show to the world. It's up to you. You know, so it's like, why even say that and instead just kind of channel so i think a lot of times it's really just free writing sometimes and trusting yeah your experience you know yeah. we've been writing forever a lot of times you know where to go and how to channel that vibe but it's like mm -hmm. trust your experience and go yeah, you know? yeah. free write. definitely definitely um on the spiritual tip moving into the next song mike talk you i think there was a line in there that you referenced biz markey biz going off it's something like that so you know just want to take a moment rest in peace to biz marky obviously yeah, with, yeah. you know send love and comfort to his family and friends did you did you ever meet biz marky did you have any type of relationship with him did i meet biz marky the first time i met biz mark i was about 12 years old oh wow taking a road trip with my mom and uh she stopped at the Maryland house and I'm chilling. I saw Biz at Roy Rogers, like sitting wow. down. I want to really? say he was there. Yeah, the crew sitting down, chilling at the Roy Rogers rest stop. I'm like, yo, run up wow. to him. Yo, Biz, we, um, 
I feel, I want to say we took a picture, but I can't remember, but he definitely gave me an autograph. And he was very impressed that I knew who he was. But oh, I'm, cool. you know, I walked away like, bro, you an icon. I'd be crazy yeah. if I know who you are. Right. But I've always, yeah, I've always loved that biz. I mean, he showed us so much, yeah. you know, when I think yeah. of it as an adult now, it's like from fashion sense to what biz used to rock everyone kind of like followed suit like yo biz was like one of the first people you saw with like these cool dapper dan flips and things you know the the rope chains but even biz's bodily intelligence his kinesthetic ability these dances and funny movements you saw yeah. but it's like it was so iconic and classic mm -hmm. but then his storytelling ability yeah it's like yo i could just tell the funniest crazy wacky stories yeah. or I could tell, you know, a direct story that's life resonating. And then his beach or it was just like, yo, this yeah. cat. But then I'm saying all these things and he was doing this in the 80s. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All this stuff I'm talking about, this is 80s. Right. Based, you know, so yeah. it's like that guy is so ahead of his time. I like to say, you know, even for myself, but for Biz, yeah, he had a few rap lives. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. In different departments right. and times, but. Yeah, man. Salute to Biz. Rest in power. Yo, truly iconic legend. A one of one. You know, yeah. word up. Nobody beats the Biz. Even to that point, right? Yep. Growing up, that was a TV commercial. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it was only New York, but there was an electronic store that had the TV commercial. Nobody beats the Wiz. Nobody wow. beats the Wiz. Yeah, wow. and he flipped it. You know what I'm saying? And made yeah. like a smash. Yeah. And it was like, when I think about it, it's like we gravitated to that right away. It's right. similar to the Red Robin Young, right? You right, know? right. <laughs> yeah. We knew before we even went to the Wiz, we knew that song. Yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. That's dope. Yeah, he was he was definitely influential on me. I remember after that album, I think it was uh, The Biz Never Sleeps. That was the first tape uh, I ever owned. My brother got it for me one year. It was the first mm -hmm. tape I ever owned, man. Loved Biz Markey. Uh Mike Talk. And Iomas, anything else stick out to you on Mike Talk? Yeah. Um we move on. Yeah, I just like the the fact that he like John Robinson wasn't only writing the beat. But he was riding over the horns that's running through that that boy like it's yeah. so jazzed influence yeah. like the whole album is just yeah. like it shows like him and blue john robinson and blue are like jazz connoisseurs just like you can hear the jazz and i just yeah. i never want that to die when it comes that marriage between hip-hop and jazz i'd never want that to die and i just really appreciated yeah. how you was like rhyming over it and sometimes you was going with the horn and then you would move away from it's just dope, man. It's just like yeah. that horn okay. you're running through that boy, and then the different samples of the horn. So yeah, I mm -hmm. really appreciate mm -hmm. that mic talk. That mic talk is dope, bro. Yeah, sure. yeah, man. Yo, huge, huge shout out to Blue. Yeah, I've been saying this and I'll say it again. Like this, this project, I literally went with what Blue delivered. There were yeah. no cherry picking of beats. There wasn't no 30 wow. beats and pick down to, yeah. yo, look, I trust your creative palette to the point, whatever you deliver, I'm running with. Yeah. And that's what it is. On down to the order of the songs as we're going down, wow. I let Blue select the order because it was oh, his wow. music. And I, I knew that he had this idea of like how the pieces go together, even before there were words and concepts connected to it. But then also, um, yeah, it was just a really inviting experience because it was a challenge. Like you mentioned the jazz, but if you notice, this is not like 60s, 70s jazz that's kind of nah, easy to no, sample. Yeah, exactly. This is like the yeah. harder jazz to yes, sample and make absolutely. cool, you know? So yeah. yes. when I was listening to this, like real talk, yo, rest in power, it took me to what Sub Rock and Zeb Love X was doing. I was just about music. to say that. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That's, it has that feel. That's what yeah. it that's yes. what it spoke to me. It was like, wow. oh, this is some old Mr. Hood KMD. Yeah. Like, you know? yeah. And so I didn't really, there was no further questions, Your Honor. Wow. He played this music. I'm like, oh, let's go. <laughs> yeah. You know? And I that's what I love mostly about it was the aesthetic wasn't the jazz that 
I'm normally known to sample or be on top of, et cetera. It was this other, it was like the early, the 40s, the 50s, you know, it was just yeah, like, wow, like, yeah. how are you even doing this? And then what was more impressive, yo, I had OGs in the game calling me like, yo, what, what's happening? I can't place right. none of these samples, bro. Yeah. Like, what is he sampling? Like, right, man, right, yeah, yeah. You know? And it's like, yo, there's only, I can't even say the sample because it's such a crazy one, but there's one that, <laughs> one OG was like, yo, the way he flipped those is crazy, yeah. you know, but the point is that impressed me that he was able to really, um, you know, come with this sonic mm -hmm. sounds, these sonic soundscapes that not only were, you know, challenging as the writer, but they felt like his personality. Like yeah. when I heard yeah, it, yeah. it, I, it yeah. felt like, oh yeah, this is blue. Like, yep. you know, and that yeah. was even dope too. Cause it's like, oh man, I, you know, this is a collab because I right. feel the blue, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad it translates that way as we put it into the world as well. Yeah. So after Mike Talk, you got a little revolution interlude with, with sound. I love interludes on albums. Yeah, me so too. Yeah. Album along. Listen, you know, that was, that, was short. All blue. that was all blue with the, you know, like, yeah. yo, it's interlude to put right here. And yep. I'm like, oh, let's go. I love it. it. Gives a character, you know, makes yeah. the music flow a certain way. Then I love the the affirming title of Young, Black, and Gifted. Yeah. And just, yeah, just love that joint and the way yeah. you're flowing on it. The beat's just kind of smooth. Not a lot. This is like kind of a a, a, a pulled back beat, you know, like exactly. there's not a lot going yeah. on. There's exactly. some of these beats, there's a lot of, like you said, a lot of horns, mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. over the place. This one's like, he, he kind of brought it back a little bit, which is nice, kind of give you some room to. And do. then he, you know, that that vocal was on there mm. when he gave me the beat, so yeah. he sampled okay. himself. Oh, you know, yeah. the way oh. the terrific young black and gifted. Oh, yeah. Okay, he sampled I thought himself. I thought that was him, but it did sound like a sample. I was like, well, maybe that's not yeah. him. That is he him. Okay, himself. Yeah. Oh, oh. But it, he, you know, I and love then it. when he said that, you know, I'm I'm like Nina Simone. Like, yeah. I'm like yeah. so yeah. when I heard, I was just like, oh, come yeah. on, bro. Yeah. But again, a lot of this was also on that jewel of like writing freely. I wasn't, yeah. you know, holding back or overthinking things. I right. trust the experience. I wonder if Blue was like that on the beats because the next beat, uh, Better Music, mm -hmm. it, it felt that way to me where it, was, it just everything, I mean, it was there was a lot going on. There's that saxophone. Oh yeah, oh going, yeah. And that subtle yeah. piano in the background. I mean, that, bass, I'll say this, when I first heard that, it sounded like underneath what you're describing, the sax playing all through, yeah. it's like his core beat that he made. And then I, it almost sounds like he literally just played a record on top of it and let it ride. <laughs> like, yo, right, yeah. you know, I never asked that, but you know, I, that's how I felt about that one. But it was like, he played the right part where it rolled and just, you know, it might've looped after a certain, but it was like a long loop. Yeah, and It just felt so organic. You know, yeah. when I heard that one, it felt like, oh, I'm in the room with these musicians. Yeah. And it's like what I said on the intro. It's like your music, you know, you can listen to it, get a gym, you know, enjoy it, go back to it again and again. That's how these beats are. Like I, I was noticing mm. things about yeah. these beats as I listened to it more and more. I didn't really catch the subtle piano uh, at first, you know, on that. Yeah. Gym. I know that Io Moss really, uh, this is the joint you quoted earlier. Yeah, um, man. And wow. there's a line that you said, and I want to like pause here for a little bit and talk about your your uh, relationship with jazz. You talked about uh, look back to move forward. Yes. I'm talking glad about you looking that back specifically to like jazz and jazz artists. Was it something else? Yeah. Well, it, it's deeper or than all that. all of it. But definitely that. But looking back to move forward is Sankofa. Mm -hmm. Right, Sankofa. Right. Uh, the symbol is literally a bird, like looking back. And what right. it means is, you know, it's the same levels of to know where you're going, you got to know where you're from, you got to right. know the foundation, right? Yeah. But what that literally means is, why would you be moving forward and rushing through the journey knowing that there's masterful blueprints? Like mm. there's legit nothing new under the sun and there's right. masterful blueprints that exist right before. Why would you not look back at those blueprints right. to navigate the space in this new way yeah. so that you don't literally, yeah, you do have to fail, but 
Why do you need to trip up and make all the failures that were already made and designed for you? So look yeah. back to move forward, you know? Right. And it's like, it's another way of saying too, um, because I, I was having this conversation recently and I have it a lot where, you know, OGs or peeps from my generation, you know, we, we wonder and ponder this disconnect with the younger generation, right? And a lot of it is, we got to understand we were coming up listening to soundscapes that taught us reverence of the pioneers. They praised the pioneers and the forefathers and the founders of the music, et cetera. What our young generation is listening to now, there's no connection to that. And then we didn't really do our jobs yeah. of making sure there's a bridge. We're the right. adults, we're the older generation. So right. we can't leave it up to them and say, they don't listen to us. They don't respect the OGs. It's like, bro, it goes back to the school, right? You got to have that relationship to get yeah, respect. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And you can't be the OG hating on the young person's music right. like right. you weren't 18, exactly. 17, 15, and your older elder was hating right. on your music. Right. Yeah, and they exactly. might have been hating on like Brand Nubian or Poor Righteous Teachers or something <laughs> right. that was actually fueling you with. Yeah. rocket science you know what right, i'm saying right, it's right. like are you kidding me this is krs why what are you waiting for like, <laughs> yeah. he just taught me the whole science of everything you know right and, but that's that's what how we have to look at it even in its explicit rawness there's still a communication happening there's still a yeah. connection happening and no i don't agree with everything that's out and how it's delivered in that space but i respect it and i yeah. know that for me to build the bridge i have to listen I need to shut up and listen and let them tell me it's yeah. their thing. You know, I'm not supposed to understand every nuance of it. Right. It's their right. thing, you know? Yeah. You know, this, yeah. this this album has a lot of jazz on it, as we've talked about. A lot of your music does. Um, yeah, man. What, what, yeah. Can you tell us just a little bit about your relationship with jazz and why jazz yeah, is man. important to you? Shout, shout out to Pops, uh, mm -hmm. Judge Pops. You know, mm. that's, that's my grandfather in... There was one particular time, because he, he always listened to jazz in the car, and there was one particular time, I just, I didn't understand it. I was too young to get it, and I asked him, I said, yo, Pops, man, why are you always listening to this elevator music, you know? And he laughed, but then he turned the music down, and then he realized, I didn't even realize that the music he was listening to were Black musicians playing the music. This is us on the instruments playing this music. I just had this vision of just like elevated music made by, you know, just people who didn't look like me. You know what I'm saying? And then when he started to break it down and then I start to see some of the album covers, you know what I'm saying? But more so hear some of the stories, you know, and the perspective of like, nah, you gotta understand like some of these cats like picked up the instrument and just taught themselves. Like most of them, most of this stuff you're hearing they didn't go to a school to learn how. And then I started to make the connection with what I was doing eventually as I got into the music. And then the storytelling again, um, when I would hear all of these stories, it became so synonymous to the hip hop world I was in, especially in the 90s in New York. It was the same thing of us linking up at these small little venues and clubs and ciphers, et cetera. And like I said earlier, we knew the cats. I don't care if you're in California at Project Blow. We knew who was the cats there. If it was the cats in Houston, the cats in Chicago, the cats in DC, wherever you were, and you were doing it, and you were our uh, constituents of A alikes. We knew, you know, and that's how the jazz world worked. They knew each other. They collabed with each other. They connected with each other. They realized. We are each other's power. And that's where I feel like we are right now, where there's a lot less labels representing artists and artists are starting to realize that the new label is collective energy, Voltron and coming together and bringing our own power and leverage to each other and blasting it to the world. That's what this record spells out, you mm. know? Although I must shout out uh, Every Deja Vu, uh, they're a boutique label out of Boston who helped us, you know, package it up and put the music into the world. And they've nice. been very instrumental in just the behind the scenes, et cetera, with um, yeah. 
the press, et cetera, and just kind of getting things around. So, but that's what that point is about. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. What's up, Iomas? Yeah, to your point, John Roberts, I really feel like community is missing within, it's always, it's kind of like this, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is how I see it. It's always like this individual way of doing things, or you have these select crews that's running, you know what I'm saying? And they won't let anybody else in. But I really feel like community is kind of missing. Um, and please correct me if, if you don't see it the same, because maybe my vision is limited, you know what I mean? I feel like in, in the way that it used to be, yes. Yeah. Okay, but okay. I, I look at community like this, like yes. if I called you, if I called life, if I called Shabazz, if I called yeah. Star, yeah. if I called, you know, Wordsworth, if, and we said, yo, we doing this, and then I, I would probably have a whole squad ready to move, you yeah. know, so I think community is more about, we have to, we have to close mouths, don't get fed. We have to reach out to each other and like activate these ideas, put ideas on the table and bring a team together of like-minded individuals that you feel it would resonate with. Like how you're speaking on education, bro. If me, you, Rawls, and Wordsworth were on a call, we'd probably be talking for four hours about this. You already this. know. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's what you're saying. So like, seriously, with what you're doing, it's like, yeah, mobilize your network. And I think that's the new community. Mobilize your network. Don't wait. Yeah, don't sit back and wait for it to happen no more because I guess it's so spread out that it's more powerful now, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. it's like, yeah, and we have we have global network of people who do different things, who have different motivations that push towards a common goal. So imagine being the general of this idea and you're like, yo, I'm gonna pull these piece, people together, build a team and create it. But the reason it'll work is because the team I put together all really feel deeply and passionate about what I'm putting to on the table. And then there's an exchange, right? Yeah. Whatever you're working on, I'm down to pour some sweat equity into that too, in exchange, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's really how I look at it. And it's not perfect. There's a lot of, you know, growth and development that's coming with that, but I'm seeing it. That's why I keep saying, I need to do a song about it, but I keep saying, we got a Voltron the game. Yeah, we you know? do. We do. Yeah, yeah. we got a Voltron. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, let's see, Profound, Iomas, and Neville. If if there's a song that you want to make sure we touch on, get it get it queued up. There's one song that I I definitely want to ask about, uh, and that's Dreamer. Mm. That man, when that beat comes on, that beat is like Dilla and RZA and some dude that yeah. is intoxicated in an alley or something. It's like all mixed together. It's just so funky. And, and like an old blues all... juke joint, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. It, it's, I love that beat, man. It is just so different. And I, I've been saying this is one of the most creative albums I've heard in a while. And um, looking at no, it's my, that, it's, I call it my juke joint album. It's the juke joint. Yeah, album. no, I feel yeah. that. I feel that. And, and this, <laughs> that beat is like, that is it. Like this, that that's that creativity. I'm yeah. Shout about. out to Elo Kush. Elo Kush is yeah. on that one, and he, he came with it. And um, yeah, it was you that know, verse. Is that the verse he's talking about? Roberta Flack dating Roberta Flack. Was that the verse? No, he said he he wanted to date uh Shaka Khan and Shaka, Shaka Khan, Khan yeah, in yeah, the twenties. Yeah. <laughs> I like he a fool for that yeah, one, bro. That's right. That's, 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 that joint was fire, bro. Yeah. But you I know what? That man. joint was it's it's interesting because that joint, I don't think I ever talked to Blue about that song, how yeah. I mean to, how it happened. Because this is how it happened. Uh I left the studio with Blue because we didn't record any of the music together, but during the making of the record, we had a, at least three, but I feel like it was four touch points of either him being in New York on the East Coast and us linking up and building. But there was definitely three times I was visiting, doing shows on the West in LA and got to sit with him. And this particular time mm. I left the studio and I feel like I was with my peeps Kenyatta. I can't remember, but I was with one of my peeps from LA and we're driving and he's like, yo, that's the motel that Sam Cook got killed in. I was like, what? what? Pulled over and pulled in because I've heard the story. I've read, you know, multiple uh, 
scenarios and you know people's perspective of what actually happened. And then his family even put out a book kind of going against what was put out there of what actually occurred. Mm-hmm. And I'm just sitting there and something happened, man, because I'm looking and I'm thinking about all that I've read, all that I've seen, documentary stuff at the time, just little YouTube clips. I'm a nerd like that. I literally look and dig up. Uh, I feel like it's it's amazing that we get to see peeps perform in these uh, forums and venues before we were even here and witness it and take it in and do something else with it. So long story short, that moment inspired me to write the first verse to that song because it was just like, wow, man, this was a cat who literally was doing high level business at a time that no artists was able to like own their masters and have yeah. a label and put and especially not as a black man at that time right. like no way that just was not the norm and the fact that he was able to do that persevere but really do it on a high level and be the demonstration for so many after him it, it inspired me to write that did you okay. see one night in miami yeah i was just about to make absolutely it. shout out to this, one night in miami man. It, yeah. yeah that's a, such a dope movie um Virginia do you King, see, man. a lot of times in movies you you can kind of see yourself in many characters but was was there one of them that you see yourself in the most of the the four that's a great question that is a great question just kind of where you are in your life you know right what now. i i gotta see that again cause because i i, I will front i felt like they didn't show enough of who I, the Sam Cooke I read about. Like, I felt mm-hmm. like, yeah, he wasn't like all that I read and knew of, you know? It was yeah. like the toned down version. Ah, because yes. yeah. the, 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 I think my favorite moment was the exchange from him and Malcolm X in the yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And Malcolm was just grilling him like you, you yeah. got to do better. You got to, you know, do this in your songs. And he was yeah, like, yes. I'm, I'm empowering yeah. myself and others. And like the, that that clash, mm. I thought was just a brilliant clash. And I mean, we we still that clash goes on today. You know, yeah. we bring up we bring up artists like Griselda, like they're out there doing their thing, empowering themselves and others. But then people are like, oh, you got to have better content though. You got to have more uplifting content. So like that clash is. So not, that, not that I'm saying Sam Cooke is like Griselda, but I'm just saying that that yeah, yeah. No, I conversation still goes today, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it was a thing where, sure, he was mostly, you know, making love song and music right, yeah. for the ladies, right? He had this audience of women who was just vibing with his joints. But it also became um, a scenario, and I feel, I could be wrong, but I feel like he only got to perform change gonna come publicly maybe once or twice ever you know what i'm saying and then right. this is the song that really coined his legacy right and it's a very powerful song a very uplifting song and i want to say did he get inspired maybe seeing hearing bob dylan do something and yeah. he just felt like whoa like i gotta say something you right know? right yeah. yeah at the but, end of that at the end of your song, Dreamer, you say, can't let go of the dream. It's too passionate, tasting success like I'm sipping on a glass of it. I love that yeah. line. <laughs> what What is the dream in that sentence to you? The dream is, the best way to describe it is moving in your purpose, moving in a space confident and comfortable enough to know even when you waver off in your thinking or get discouraged I'm supposed to be here this is what I'm here for you know this is what it's about yeah and it's yeah. like find your way back so the dream is really that zone of saying wow I'm really living and moving in my purpose um I was with one of my young homies last night and I said yo if we're not if one of the reasons we're doing this is not to be in that dusty stacky stack of crates 50 to 100 years from now and people still be playing the music and doing and flipping whatever they're doing like we're sampling this stuff then what are we doing you know it's like no I, i want this music to definitely outlive my physical experience here but more so i definitely want it to be a clear cut communication for people who are not even here yet Right. To dig what's going on in our time, yeah. you That's know, because I felt like that was done for me. 
So I'm that's my way of giving back. I love it. I love yeah. it. All right, I Omas, is it is there a song that you just have to to ask about or comment on? Yeah, I wanted to ask about the yeah. Motherland song. Mm. Um, I just uh, yeah. and not so more, more, much of the lyrics. I'm always in 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 tune and drawing off of mm-hmm. uh, John Robinson's lyrics as an MC. But I just love the way that Blue chopped up the organ. I think that was some like Daylight's Three Feet High and Rising. Or is that the original? He may have found you know the original. What? I'm, not, I'm not sure. That's, but the that's way crazy. he flipped that joint, I yes. was like, yo. <laughs> and he See, even I, put the hand claps from yeah. the interlude. I was like, wow, that's I didn't, genius, bro. It's crazy. Right. I didn't even think that was from that album, but that's yeah. what it made me think of. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah that's exactly it's... what it is. Okay. The way he's, the way he's chopping right. it. And yeah, he put yeah. the hand claps in. I was Dang, like, I'm yeah, gonna go yeah. back. I'm going back to blacking to out. Like blue yeah. is blacking out on this boy. Like, I'm is teaching me about. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And I was so like, I and it goes you know back. what? I I didn't think of that, but you're right. Yeah. Right. Hold on. Yeah. But it it, it makes me. It goes back to the Sankofa conversation, right? Like going back to those those gems that we used to listen to it's mm-hmm. still jewels in there that we can use today oh yeah it's and, still that, and that's what blue did he went right yeah. back to to the day law yeah. <laughs> like who would think to flip that that was an interlude it was interlude. Right, yeah. right yeah and yeah. him flipping yeah. it and using it and now john so robinson dope. bless him with the beat and john <laughs> robinson get to run all over that boy you know what I'm <laughs> like that's that boy is amazing bro i yeah, was like amazed dope. by that that's uh, dope and just yeah you got me like I'm, I'm going back to that after <laughs> yeah this. i got it like, like yeah. we, we might have to pull it up here <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that joint crazy. Yeah, if you could play a little bit of it, because you can hear it. Like you can hear, I was like, man, that's Dayla. I was like, that's because wow. I I it. thought of Dayla, but I didn't I didn't know if okay, hold on. We we got unless he found the original. I, I don't know. Maybe he mixed the original with with this, I don't know. This, I'm this, like, you know what I'm saying? Well either, well, either way, Dayla <laughs> Prince Paul, we love yeah, him. Yeah, yes, this is it right here. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, life in existence. All right, we don't get sued by the Woo! Facebook police. Man, that joint is so dope. That's like my favorite one. Those drums too. That's like one of my favorite joints off that joint, dog. That's I can play that joint over. And over. <laughs> so dope. So that dope. Was all right, fire, bro. Let's uh, let's go down to Neville. Uh, Neville, do you have a song that you want to make sure that we touch on tonight? Where's Neville? Are you with us? There we go. Yes, yeah, since we're gonna talk about the dream and everything. Um, let's go to Martin and Malcolm. What inspired mm. that? And that is kind of the end. And I started with that. And I was like, Malcolm had yeah. a dream. Martin had a dream. Yeah. Shout out to Kendrick Lamar. What's that about? And then even the title of the album. Yeah. Right? King Jr. No doubt. King. Yeah. King. So yeah. Can you get into that? That's my It's dream. like, yeah, it's both. It's King Jr., King Jr., right? Um, I'll start there. The title... Um, what what made me agree to it? Because I fought it a little bit. Uh, one of the working titles was going to be Black and White TV. You know, that was going to be the title. But Blue was like, nah, King JR. And I was like, why King JR? He was like, I'll tell you a good reason. Because right now, these are the best beats I ever made. And I'm giving them all to you like a king. And I was like, wow, King JR, let's go. And I had no further questions. After. When he dropped them, when he said that, it's like, what do you say to that? What do you rebuttal to that with pushback? You know, it was just like, but that's what coined the, the title. And then he did tell me also too, he said, uh, you know, just the years he's known me, he's felt like I've had this King Jr. demeanor in a sense where I have a calm collective tone most of the time, but I still have a fire that I could turn up and, you know, be more directive and uh, I guess this this leadership mentality as well. So just hearing those, you know, ideals from <laughs> my young brother, you know, Blue, when he said that, I didn't really have any more pushback on the title choice. And that was his choice of title. Um, but Malcolm and Martin. Wait, wait, sorry, John. Yeah. Continue with the title, there's something else with that. I'm thinking of, King Jr. with Martin. 
Mark. Yeah. Like the King Jr. Exactly. That's that's a piece of it as well, right? And then the album artwork. I wasn't I remembered that. That was a question of mine that I had when I looked at the album artwork. No doubt. What what's put, behind put that? Yourself, put yourself in this king mindset. Be regal. There's a headless king, so you could put yourself there and walk in the space and walk the hot sands to wow. really be in the mindset of king shit, queen shit, regal, you know, regal minded, uplifting, empowerment. You know, I'll take it back to the last project, the level up, level up yourself, you know, level up the way that you think, be more mindful of others and yourself, take care of you so that you could take care of other people. You know, share with yourself, empower, invest in yourself, but not just with things. Invest in yourself with information because that's the real gem. That's what navigates you through all of these hardships, obstacles, and the learning. So that's what the, the cover is about. Shout out to Floyd the Locksmith, who's not only a brilliant visual artist, but amazing producer. Um, he produced one of my iconic tracks from back in the day called Always Bless. And he also painted this brilliant artwork. So salute to him. And, um, and yeah, Martin and Malcolm, the song. Um, growing up, especially reading about both and not just in school, but just on our own terms, we always saw, you know, the, uh, the balance of both, right? Martin was known for the more nonviolent approach, et cetera. Malcolm was known for the by any means necessary. I dare you to step to my crew. We, yo, you, you touch us, we swinging back, you know? So that's what that song was displaying, but it wasn't displaying it literally in that sense. It was balance in the sense of how do you stick with the music and your creative side of your life, but still balance it with world worldly things and responsibilities and you know that side of your lifestyle and not kill your creative spirit you know that's martin and malcolm and you know that speaks to my life it's always been balance and the answer to that at least for me is don't separate them you know it's all a part of it live the lifestyle so mm. i turn this all of it into a lifestyle. So the youth culture powers hip hop lifestyle too. So is the writing of King JR and all the other albums, but so is the reading, so is the self care. It's, it's hip hop on a cultural sense of things. And that's what I think we're, we're moving into as people from the hip hop generation. We're realizing that culturally, this is a global platform that we can build and communicate on, but literally create ecosystems on to survive and thrive with you know so that's really what that mindset is dope that's i own dope. what's up what's up that's dope i, yeah. I just dope. i got yeah i, I want to ask after we finish the the you know talking about the album but I definitely want to ask, what are you reading? Because I love the way you like think. I, I know you're a voracious reader because that's in my mind. All my favorite MCs are readers, mm -hmm. like voracious mm -hmm. readers. And I know you are because I know I saw Pete you on Instagram talking about uh, shout out to Wise Intelligence book. Uh, yeah. brother Neville, my brother Neville put me on to and I, I bought, as soon as he sent me the title, I bought it mm -hmm. on Amazon, mm -hmm. like right then and there. And I got it. I haven't read it yet, but I know you were reading it. But I, I, we'll yeah, go man. there later. We'll go there later. But I wanted to talk about cotton because mm -hmm. um, uh, I've been really thinking about that word cotton because my grandmother is from due west, South Carolina. Mm. And I remember I actually wrote a song about it. Like I, I could see I remember sitting at the table picking collard greens with my grandmother. And I was like the same hands that pick cotton. She used to tell mm. me how she used to pick cotton. And um, I'm really finding a. Uh, I don't know what the word is, but a connection with that word cotton. And I was yeah. just really happy to see that. And, and, and I'll tell you another story. I was I live in Toronto now. And so I went was walking by Kensington Market, which is like this market place where you could buy all sorts of stuff. And I saw this place that was selling cotton. And that's mm -hmm. why I, I cut my camera off because I wanted to go and get the prop. This is what my grandmother used to pick. And it reminded me of your of, of your mm -hmm. song. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to know like what made you write 
that song? Because I know my connection with that word, but I want to know, like, what's your connection with that word? No, nah, that's that's dope, man. Yeah. And um, I, shoot, it, a lot of that inspiration comes from a KRS-One bar. Okay. We used to pick cotton. Now we pick up cotton when we shopping. <laughs> and it just, I never forgot that. It was like, ah, oh, yeah. like, come on, Chris. Ah, oh, like, it was good. Yeah. Like, hear you, you know, but it was, it was that, that was the underlying inspiration, but it was also a challenge for Blue too. Cause you know, I'm like, yo, I really want to rock to this beat, but make it make sense for me. And he did. Hold on, it's been a long day. Yeah. I, hold on. And I was like, but when he did that, I text him like, Bro, you should do like a whole record like this. Like yeah. I would, <laughs> you know? Really? But it when he did that and said that, it put me in this zone of, Cotton, cotton, this is a mindset album, you know, King JR, like I said, it's a mindset. Cotton's a mindset and it takes you back exactly to what you just showed, right? Where it's like, yo, we got, we got to get away from like dwelling so much on our past that every moment of our, of our lives is basking in our pain. Mm -hmm. Like we got to move away from cotton and really start to heal from that experience, not forget it, pay reverence to ancestors who passed through, et cetera, but wanting to literally be, you know, their, their greatest inspirations, yeah. you know, have them looking upon us and saying, wow, this is amazing where they've been able to take it. But then it's also like just seeing things in the world. It's like, yo, when you're, when you're in this state, that we're in right now, seeing where the world is going and you're unwilling to contribute to the empowerment of the world, especially younger people, that's cotton. Like yeah. straight, that's yeah. cotton. So it, it's, it's literally turning that metaphor into a lot of different things, but I guess I'll point it by saying blues chorus, I've, I've, it's been a long day. Yeah. Basically we're tired, we're mm -hmm. tired, you know, we're tired of, the scenarios going on like blatantly in front of people on the big screen in HD 4K and people not really seeing like, yo, this is a thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, this, this whole community of people don't get the privilege of not seeing race or color. We have to see it, period, because it's part of our dynamics in where we live currently you know so even when i hear like teachers and adults say oh i'm colorblind i don't see color that's a privilege that really is that's a privilege to not see color i see color you know why because when i walk into a store they see me absolutely no matter how educated and next level i think i am i'm just another brother who might steal something in their eyes you know what i'm saying so yeah i see and feel color regularly and that's what cotton is. It's 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 a healing anthem to move from that, but to hope that people are down to just raise their awareness, raise your vibration. You know, like we we have to stop vibrating on these low frequencies mostly. You know, there's always going to be a balance, but my young brothers and sisters, like truly raise, raise up your vibration. We need you, y'all are the warriors, yeah. you know? Y'all are the warriors. We need you here, alive and well, to push through. Without yeah. you here, we may not make it. Yeah, for sure. Just Real talk. Future. I was telling them, I was telling the young uh, students today, man, y'all the future, man. Like, yeah, you man. go be, mm. be passing the baton on to y'all. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And so th they're gonna take on the mantle when when we when our physical frame is, is gone, they're gonna take up the mantle, hopefully take up the mantle, even when it comes to hip hop. Like that's why I'm at a place right now. I wanna I wanna meet young people and just pour into them. You know what I mean? Like no. if they wanna be MCs, if they wanna be beat makers or artists or whatever, I wanna pour the things that I know and I learn into no them, you know what I mean? No so, they, so they could take on the mantle, you know? Yeah. So, and I think you, to your point, like I feel like we, we, we have done a, we've, we have done a poor job of doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but we still have time though, you right. know what I mean? Oh, we got time. Yeah. And we have plenty of help, right? Like, yeah. come on, it's, it's yeah. like, 
it's unfortunate, but it's very real that systemically it's written on the psyche of the world mm. that real talk, black men are not instinctually intelligent. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk. It's not like when you see black men, it's not synonymous with intelligence and credence and knowledge and you know, um, sustainability, et cetera. The list goes on, and we got to change that narrative. You know, like congrats to what you're doing and these steps you're taking because that changes mm -hmm. the narrative. But not only that. The, we need more of us in these spaces. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. I, I feel like it's unfortunate that we as a people have to feel guilty for empowering our situation, mm -hmm. you know, or wanting to lift us up. It's like, oh, that's not fair. It's like, why? Everyone else around the world oh, does it. it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, why can't we make our situation better? And that's the reality of things, too. It's like, the the upliftment of our people and is not going to come from outside of our people and that's yeah. the thing we need to really understand it's it's us that have to do it you know and that's what i love about hip-hop because mm. it it allows a different lens you know I, mm. i'll connect it here too right i say hip-hop is the malcolm or the martin and malcolm right yeah. because the visions that they wanted to see happen in their lifetime hip-hop showed and proved that absolutely for yeah. real name me name me a scenario in our lifetime that connected more people and connects more people than hip-hop culturally yeah. of all walks of life school religion creeds right you know whatever it's like hip-hop brings us together under one umbrella and when you're really in this culture, you're not tripping off, oh, he white, oh, he's Italian, oh, he's, exactly. yo, it's hip hop, yeah. period. Yeah. Be who you are and shine. That's what hip hop wants. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I, I, like the, I like the fact that hip hop is borderless, you know what mm. I mean? And, yeah. and boundless, like we, our bodies, our physical bodies need a passport to get through borders, but hip hop doesn't. Right. Hip hop exactly. moves and flows and mm. that's why we're all interconnected in that way, you know what I mean? Like, it's interesting cause I was like, kids on the south side of Chicago look exactly like the kids in Toronto. It's like, why is that hip hop? Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. like, that's it's that culture, it's that youth that's... culture, it's that youth culture power. Like mm -hmm. young people look the same, wherever yeah. you go, South Africa, they got that same look about them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, and that just speaks to like the interconnectedness and that, you know, that, uh, what do they call it? The uh, uh, transnational or the Pan-African, mm -hmm. that Pan-African connection that we have. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, no, that's what the song that. says too. Yeah. The youth culture yeah. power hook. Yeah. They don't even gotta speak YCP, exactly. and they do exactly. the same thing YCP. Yeah. They make exactly. connections worldwide. Y this C is how they live life, yeah. you know. And it's like, yeah. again, it's to take it back to that bag real quick. What what connected me to that is them doing the same things as it related to not even just the dress and the fashion, but fidget spinners and things like that <laughs> like for real it's like yeah, yo i was in japan real. when that came out and i saw it on the counter of a 7-eleven i'm like what's this i get back to class and yo i see one student with a fidget spinner <laughs> I'm, I'm checking it out like yo, it? oh this is dope yo the next day the whole school had them and the principal made like three announcements if i see anyone with fidget spinners and, wow. and i went to the principal and i said you know what I know how you feel about these, but can we talk about Because this is a thing. I just got back from Japan. I saw this. I just talked to my partner, Jason Rawls. They got him in his school. But I also talked to my peeps in Cali, and he said his son threw himself on the floor because he wouldn't buy him a fidget spinner. <laughs> but I'm like, no, this is a thing, and this is a communication we need to pay more attention to. And again, just like us, that's why I said on uh, one of the songs, I said, before better music, before Twitter, we were scripting and building a following, Absolutely. right? For us, it was a different type of communication. We didn't have it seamlessly through, you know, these supercomputers in our pockets, but we were still able to communicate in the same way because even back in our time, before the internet, if you went to Toronto where the hip hop was happening, yeah, we probably had the same gear on. Yeah. You went to Chicago, New York, DC, duh, yeah, we had the same kicks, same type of hat, same gear, same aesthetic, same feel. And it was that 
cultural communication. We didn't have to speak to each other to know about it. The culture told us. Exactly. Yeah. That's the facts. That's facts. That's so dope. So yeah, and I'm, I'm glad y'all mentioned that in the book too, because uh, I love that part where y'all talked about it in the book where young people was on Twitter way before politicians mm. and now adults are using it. Like kids exactly. picked up Twitter and they left it. And they, they, they were like, ah, we on to something else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Now, the, yeah. now the adults is on it. Like it's come out yesterday and you've been on that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I literally say that. I'm like, yo, I, I go into these workshops. I'm like, how many people on Snapchat? They're like, what's that? How many people on IG? How many people on Twitter? Uh, what? Facebook. Oh, I was like, you know why? Because Twitter and Facebook's for old people, and they'd be like, damn. What? And you know, but I'm joking. But I'm saying, like, yo, exactly what you're saying. Young people been there, done that, and they moved on yeah. two levels up, and we exactly. think that we doing something. And it's like, nah, yo, you really want to tap in? Look at and watch and observe what they're doing. Yeah. That's how you stay in and on the pulse of what's really happening. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Oh, I learned this is the last thing I'll say for a while. That I've learned that when you go into a new space, whether you're an educator or a youth worker, mm-hmm. you ask the young people. Because I remember I had a job on the west side of Chicago. I'm a south sider, but I'm working on the west side. I had I know know nothing about the west side. Yeah. What I did with the young people, like, man, hit me to what's 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 the culture around here? And they told me, bro, they gave yeah. me like an hour and a half tutelage on where and where not to go in the, on the west side of Chicago. You see that house? That's a crack house. That house, they sell drugs out of that house. They knew the whole landscape. And I'm exactly. talking fourth, this like fourth and fifth graders. I'm exactly. Like, Yo. But you know, you know what you just proved here? And this is something that we teach and speak on a lot. It's not connected to only race. Yes. It's culture. And it could be like, for instance, in New York, right? If I'm in Fort Greene or bed but then I go to East Flatbush, that's an entirely different culture. Yeah. You know why? Because yeah. those families are from Haiti and Jamaica and the Caribbean islands, et cetera. But then, so yeah, there's different culture. There's different nuances that you got to pay attention to. That's just like when Rawls and I did a workshop in Olentangy County, Ohio, we knew what the demographic was like. It wasn't going to be people who looked like us. Wow. So then that's when we had to tap in and pull in the, the visco girls and the skateboarding and tap yeah. into that zone because that's what they're on. That's what wow. the young people were on there. And what you said is right on point. Like, know, know your, uh, read the demographic. room. Yeah. Yeah. Know your yeah. demographic. But yeah. hip hop terms, read the room. If you're on yeah. stage and you can really read the room, you got to really take it to that next level. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this is dope. Sure. Yeah, this, this is, is dope, dope, man. man. <laughs> Yo, John, John, I have two questions for you, though, John. Really quick. About and we, this... Yeah, we went we went over an hour and 30, didn't we? Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, it, sorry, sorry, sorry. Nah, it's, it's all good. This is flowing, you know. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You sure? All right. The questions that I had, because of what's being talked about here, a little bit before where uh, Ayama said they get like everybody looks the same, I guess the dress is the same, Toronto, mm-hmm. XYZ. Kind of want to go into the song Heavy Ghetto. Yeah. What's that about? And then the flip side, like Kingdom of Heaven, kind of feel like they're two sides of the same coin. That was my question. Like, what's what are those songs about to you and what inspired those two songs? No doubt. Well, definitely what inspired those two songs were the beats. Um, right away um but heavy ghetto i i did i did the formula there's a formula to get like a burner verse at the end of your song and it's very easy all you do is go to a prolific mc and hand him the song with up the two other verses already on it and they'll study those joints and come with the burner verse at the end like blue did you know what I'm saying? Because he that's the formula to do that, if you're ever wondering. I'm sure like when Capadonna did that verse on the uh, ice water joint, yeah. he probably heard the rhymes first and just came in like, ah, that's the formula. <laughs> but the walls. heavy ghetto was coming from a mindset of like, really, I guess it taps into all that we've been talking about. Being able to 
see the brilliance of so-called ghetto, right? There's a, there's a cultural capital that comes with that, you know, that's valuable and spends all over the planet. Like literally, you can go anywhere and that, I would describe it as the black American experience. And the reason I call it heavy ghetto is because that's where we were systemically put and redlined into. But it's synonymous to a rose breaking through the concrete. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't keep us down. You could put us in these boxes, et cetera. We'll still innovate and navigate out of them and find a way to the next plane and the next space. So no matter how heavy ghetto it gets, the youth gonna be a problem in a good way. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm I saying? Yeah. Can yeah. I read that? Can I read that, that, is, that line? That's a dope Absolutely. Line. Yeah, I like the next generation gonna be a problem in a good way, moving through the world in a hood way, a street smart perspective is what I should say. Mm. Political critical to many blood suckers, police too scared in our hood, that's why they bust us. It's just us in a system that don't love us. Mm. Come on, man. Yeah. I was like, come on, yeah, man. man. That joint powerful, bro. That verse yeah. is powerful, bro. Thank you, man. And it's, yeah. you know, again, yeah. these are like these thoughts, these inner thoughts, these messages, yeah. but then, you know, I'm again, I'm speaking to me too. Yeah. I need to hear this. I need yeah. to work this out in my mind because it's it's hard to watch. It's hard to see. It's hard to, I'll, I'll say this, because everyone on this call or this Zoom here is familiar with faces of death, right? You remember yeah. that? Faces mm -hmm. of death. Remember when we were younger, that was like almost impossible to watch the whole thing. It was just grueling it up. Guess what? Young people see faces of death on IG every day, 10 times worse. So the desensitization or desensitizing of death and violence in the circle of young people around the world really is alarming. It's alarming. And then we wondering, yeah. oh man, they have no they have no respect for life. And it's like, look at the content that they yeah. have access to in real time, yep. every day around the clock. It's nothing to them. Right. It's like death becomes literally a couple of emojis and I'm yeah. on to the next. And it's even leaking into us. Yeah. You know, yeah. where I'm I'm these days sometimes I'm hesitant to, I don't want to like a death post. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I don't want to get it convoluted, but then my spiritual side says, yo, this transition isn't a negative experience. It's someone transitioning into the ancestral plane. That's our culture. That's how I live and observe transitioning. So I don't, I don't want to either like channel this negative experience with death. Like it's not the next great thing. I, I don't know. We haven't been there. So I don't want to judge and say, based on this culture, we should be sad this day and put on all black versus no, this is my elder or my loved one transitioning into the spiritual plane and energy doesn't die. Yeah. John, I'm into when that. it comes to the, the transition, there's a very touching piece that I saw you have on IG when Brother MF Doom passed. Yes. I saw what you said and that was powerful. Speak a little bit on your relationship with him and X, Y, and Z. Yeah, yeah, Doom is easily one of my greatest mentors in this creatively. You know, he's been teaching me before I met him. Um, you know, I, I'm a student of Zeb Love X before Doom even, you know, reinvented himself as Doom. But um, when we got to meet, it was uh, late 90s, 98, and it was, it was like an institution. It was really understanding the nuances of a true scientist who every move had a method to it. There was nothing that was just done just because. And Doom lived by a mantra known as need to know basis. If you needed to know, you'll definitely know. But if you don't need to know, you'll never ever, ever know. And it, it, it spoke poetically to even the announcement of his transition. You know, like when people are like, oh man, that's crazy. It didn't surprise me. It was very villain, very doom. 
you know, classic villain style. But I'll say, um, yeah, he's taught me gems I'm still unpacking. Mm. You know, um, yeah, I'm still unpacking the gems. I'll share, I'll share one of the dynamic gems that helped me in my experience of the transition from Science of Life and Psy to John Robinson. You know, how that came about using my given name was very much inspired by Doom uh, living in Atlanta. We all out here and this is the call ID era. So when I called his house, you know, he knew me as Psy, but my government would pop up, John Robinson. So one day I go to pick him up and we're going to a session and he's like, yo, your name is John Robinson? You don't even look like a John Robinson. That's crazy. You know, every time you call a crib, I'm like bugging, like, damn, John Robinson, you sound like, like a professional or something, <laughs> you know? So I would laugh, but then one day he's like, yo, I got this idea. I think you should rap with your government name, you know? And I'm like, nah, I would never do that, man. I've been dodging that name my whole life. That's not a cool name, bro. That's for school only. And I'm done with school, so yeah. But at the time as well, I was transferring and transitioning into more of a behind the scenes business hat and lens with shaman work recordings and, you know, using my given name and meetings, et cetera, business card, just on the business end of things. So that led to me going back to Doom and kind of talking more about it. And the jewel he gave me was, because I asked him, how do I separate the two? How do I make it different? And he said, take the ad libs out. People don't speak with ad libs. So he's like, you know, not to say never use ad libs, but don't make it the, the forefront of what you're doing. He said, little side raps like you're live on stage when you're in the studio. John Robinson should rap like you're sitting in a chair side by side or across from a person speaking to the whole world one person at a time. Conversational style, straight up. Take the ad libs away have a conversation. And he told me, he said, that's why I feel a lot of people gravitate to the doom shit because I'm talking to everyone, but I'm talking to you when you're listening. Mm. That's yeah, a part of the headlessness. Like the, yeah, like if, you the, notice the cover, doom, the if you notice doom doesn't use ad libs. It's yeah. voice. It's, yeah, it's I'm, I'm speaking yeah. to you. There's no, he's like, humans don't got all these 10 voices around. Wow. Like, what you ad libbing yeah. for? Talk to the people. And I'm yeah. like, right. But wow. real gems, real gems. And I, I noticed that too. I watched a video with you today. He was on a radio station, and it was a guy from Detroit, and he was John. He was you and Jay Rawls, and not. I'm. It's no disrespect to the. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not gonna say the MC's name, but no disrespect yeah. to him. Like, you know, he got up and stood up, and was like all the energy, and you just like a like a like a like a martial arts master just mm -hmm. kept sitting in your seat. <laughs> calm as possible and yeah. was getting the ooze and the eyes like I was like that is a master bro <laughs> I was like yeah. that is a master bro like the way you was like and it's like you said you was just talking like I'm talking to the no people doubt. you know and that I mean? was and that, that was that also energy. a teaching moment too. yeah like, for real in a, way, in a real way it was a teaching yeah. moment of saying yeah. like yo sometimes and I learned like that from stage yeah. shows, yeah. there would be, you know, comrades and Whitney, like, yo, up there talking on the stage, like, yo, they're yeah. not really feeling it. I'm like, yo, they're loving it. They're more than loving it. Right. I was like, guess what? We're in Portland or, you know, we're in Maine where, yeah, they probably smoke tree before the show and they're just chilling, but they yeah. love it. And guess what? When we get off stage and walk to the merch table, they're gonna follow us and give yep. us our flowers and tell us mm -hmm. how they feel. And that's what would happen all the time. Yeah. And it's the same thing with MCs I'm around. I would show them that that's dope, but you know what? You could kill it and not even need to do it. Exactly. All. Like exactly. real talk. Yeah. People go straight. And again, I'm reading the room. Yeah. I'm reading the vibe, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. dope. You, you yeah. Sorry, go ahead, too. No, sorry. I was going to say, uh, we, we're heading up to the midnight hour. I want to be respectful. If, yeah, if you want to sure, keep on going for, sure, for a little sure. bit, we can. If, if you need to get some rest. You know what? If there, yeah, if there's a couple more questions, okay. I'll say let's keep going. But I, I must do this. I must shout out because there's some fam in the, in the joint, you know. Oh, shout yeah, shout out. them out. I see Shanika Johnson. I went to high school with her. You know oh, what I'm saying? Word. So, yeah, see her salute. in the building. Salute. Um, yeah. Salute Ross Jujima. 
Salute Shishad Ali, my man Thomas Simmons, um, shoot, salute Knife Scientists, and yeah, all the peeps, you know yeah, what we'll, I'm saying? We'll, we'll end on some shout outs, so you'll have some more time to shout <laughs> out. Sure, for sure, for sure. That's yeah. how we end the Can show. Ask, yeah, never, I don't ever have one last question. It. Go ahead, buddy. This is my last one, but I have to ask this. <laughs> no doubt. This is like, this was going to be my first question, but we went into the album, so I left it. But um, my question is, because you're talking about dreams, right? And from the outside looking in, it seems to me that you've been successful in different paths and different pursuits and dreams. I'm sorry if I'm low. From the outside, right? I don't know. I haven't walked a mile in your shoes, so I don't know. But my mm -hmm. question is, as a man that has walked the line and put one in the professional realm, one in the personal creative realm, what are the freedoms and constraints in the educational system that you've experienced? And what are the freedoms and constraints that you've experienced in the music industry as an independent artist? Yeah, man. Because everybody that, every bird that flies has to land eventually, right? Yeah. Fly again. I kind of want, because we spoke, we're speaking to the youth about dreams and we're speaking about the future. You seem like you've lived successfully, quote unquote, on your terms to a certain extent. I want to know yeah. what the freedoms and constraints are. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, in the EDU world, a lot of the freedom is the lens to understand the nuances of the culture of students that I serve in this seamless way that most of the other adults can't see what I see. So it allows me leverage, but also allows me a, a space to share that intel with other adults to try to usher them into the mindset of being able to tap in in the same way. And again, a lot of that goes back to care and building relationships, et cetera. But on the flip side of that, there's pushback because there's, you know, there's, there's a certain feeling of some educators towards hip hop pedagogues, right? Like you're coming from the hip hop forum into the education space like I said earlier, to some people, that's blaspheme. That doesn't even go together. But if you're a part of this culture, you understand that hip hop, of course, should be in the education space. It's been teaching us our whole lives. Like real talk, no matter how many books I've read, how deep I've been in the education space, none of it has taught me more than hip hop culturally. None of it, none of it, you know? And, you know, that's part of the pushback because not everyone sees through that lens. Not everyone has the lens of understanding when you say hip hop, you're not talking about music and particularly music in the mainstream that's mostly focused on violence and death. You know what I'm saying? But you're talking about an entire culture that spans across the world and connects people who don't even speak the same language because they speak hip hop. So yeah. if I'm in Japan or I'm in name another country that doesn't speak English or the language I'm speaking and projecting. If I say, make some noise or put your hands up, they're gonna do that because they speak hip hop. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's that's the, the flip side of those two coins. And then just on the life side of things, um, it's from the hip hop, the music part, I feel like there's not a lot of pushback for me these days just because I do it on my own terms. I've, I've, I've let go of the mindset of um, giving away my intellectual property and ownership of what I create to said company to own forever for me to get exchanged for props and leverage and exposure. I'd rather take the long journey and own it and build it, but more so be the example of showing other emerging artists how to do it, you know? And the reality is we're in a time where you can't just be an artist if you're doing this. You have to think of yourself as a business person, an entrepreneur, yeah. you know, truly, because yeah. there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of pieces to meticulously keep this thing going. And the biggest part is you empowering yourself enough to stay motivated, stay in it, to want to do it, you know, and have that why and that purpose. If you don't have that why and that purpose, that's why I said it's bigger than hip hop and looking cool. You got to really 
want to do this and there's a why and a purpose that's deeper and bigger than just you standing there. Dope. Man, I love good. that. I love that. Yeah. Man, that's good, man. Yeah, no. So good. So, so, so good. Yeah, I'm, good thing this is live on Facebook. We can go back and get all these gems. Yeah, you bro. Because I'm Dude, definitely I need, going I need back to go back and get pad, these bro. Yeah, and it, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll upload it. We'll upload it too as a podcast. So it'll be all over. But we'll send you the links. Uh, so yeah, you show them out. John Robinson, sure. before you go, we have this uh, sh- quick game that we like to play with all of our guests where we celebrate some of the albums uh, that you love and, and appreciate. No uh, doubt. So profound. Let's let's hit them off with the question. Okay, party people in the house. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. In this portion of the show, we'll show an assortment of hip hop albums and challenge our guests to describe them in one word or less. Do you accept the challenge? All right, he accepts the challenge. Does it have to be one word though? Can it be two? I mean, no one has successfully <laughs> gone through all the albums using only one word yet. So it's up Master to you. Master Ace did. Master Ace did. Did Master Ace do it? I challenge myself. Oh, oh he did do it. Of course Ace did it. Yeah, he Ace did it. All right. <laughs> all right. For, and, you and, know and, what? And, I'm a, cha- I'm he's, a challenge. He's a master. He's one a word. Master. He's a master. All right. That's the, ru- that's the rules, right? One there, word. That's the rule. Yeah. yeah. I mean, nobody. Yeah, everyone pretty much fails. But it's it's all good. All right. Here we go. First album. Rest. Mr. Hood by KMD. Wow. Damn, one word. You said it already. Wow. Yeah, no, no, no. Wow. That's not the word. That's not the word. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hood, KMD. Blueprint. Blueprint. Okay. I love it. One for all. Brand Nubian. Elevation. Mm. Return of the Boom Bap. KRS One. Raw. Raw. I love it. Step in the arena. Gangstar. Jazz. Mm. Jazz. Time. Leaders of the new school. Queens. All right. Dope. Last one. See if you can do it. The 1960s jazz revolution again. By J.R. J. Rawls, John Robinson. Over with. Secular. He did it, ladies and gentlemen. He did it. That's only two, second that's one two artists in a row. Two man. artists in a row. <laughs> I knew John <laughs> Robinson was gonna be wait, able to do it. Wait, 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 wait. I knew wait, it all wait, the time. Yeah, oh, I was so confident funny. in my brother's ability. Yeah, yeah. Man, I knew he was gonna do it. Hold up. He won, you know he won, but I gotta play. Hold up, JR. <laughs> Why Queens for Why Queens for L O N S? That I'm I'm a little curious with that. Why Why Queens? Because that's because that's where I was when I was listening to that's that. That's what mm. I thought. Okay, that's what gotcha. I thought. Because I was but like L O N S. Okay, okay, gotcha. But I was in Far Rockaway Queens, which Ooh. is like yeah. smack away from Long Island. So it was oh. like a, a very ill location to be, like in Long Island where they yeah. were. Yeah, and and then also, you know, like for what I would have said if there was no word limit, I would have said um, "Sha Now" and "Tropical Later." I should have said "Rumpel <laughs> Rumpel Tillskin." That's what I yes. should have said. Rumpel Tillskin. Yes, yes. because that album remind me of the time that that was being created, and then just being in that hood, I knew about "Sha Now" and "Tropical Later," Rumpel Tillskins, and just that crew. And yeah, it was just like murmurs of like, yo, there's this new crew coming out. They connected to leaders and they from LI, you know, so yeah, it's just all those memories. And this is before I was really doing any of my own music. Wow. Yeah. John Robinson, thank you for being here tonight. Really appreciate it. A a treat for us. The way we end our shows, uh, we, we do shout outs. Uh, so we'll we'll give our shout outs and then we'll turn it over you to you to take it away and give the final shout out. So no doubt, no doubt. Good. All right. 
Cool. Uh, profound. Who you got Yo. for us tonight? Oh, man, shouting out the children, man. Amir, Zach here, Rosalina, Ariel, Daima, and happy birthday to my baby boy, Elijah. Turned 10 yesterday. Nice. So that's how we do it, man. Happy born. And, man, and then, you know, and shout out to my Boom Bat Chat brothers and John Robinson. Definitely, uh, you definitely need a notepad whenever you, uh, this brother is around <laughs> because you don't want to miss these jewels and these yeah. gems. And uh, man, I appreciate you coming through, man. I got a lot of homework to do, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, Omar. So you got a who you shout out tonight? Man, definitely got to shout out my boom bap chat brothers. Got to shout out home plate, Chicago, Southside. Um, my family in the Detroit area in the D. Um, definitely got to shout out where I'm at now in the T dot. Um, shout out my BSC. Black Studies cohort at the University of Toronto, Oise. And man, John Robinson, like I said in the beginning, man, you 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 continuing to teach me and show me what type of artist and MC that I want to be. And I just really appreciate you taking the time to be here tonight, man. It means a lot, bro. Like for real. Like right. I appreciate you, you man. man. I appreciate you. And continue to keep being that mentor for me. And I, I hope that I'll be able to chance, you know, get an opportunity to get to know you better for sure, bro. Cause you've been like, for sure a mentor to me. So from a distance, yeah. so I really appreciate you, bro. For real, yeah, thank man. you for being here. Uh, likewise, likewise, yeah. the love yeah. is reciprocated for yes, sure. Yes, yes. All day. Dope, dope, thank you, Ayo Mas. Neville, who you shouting out tonight? Definitely the Boom Bap Brothers here, man. One love, John Robinson, it's amazing. AKA my boy, Blue. AKA my favorite color. Yo, that's that's my that's my favorite MC the last 10 years. This project, phenomenal. King JR joins phenomenal. And um, hold on, let me just clear my voice. <clears throat> just wanna drop what I say here in the spirit of the dream. Hey your world, your world is yours, hey your world, your world is yours, your world, your world is yours, your world. So easily one of my favorite slick rick joints. Yeah. 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 Dope, dope. Thank you, Neville. I uh, want to shout out obviously the Boom Bat Brothers here tonight. As always, always look forward to Thursday nights. Always a good time, rejuvenating for me. Want to shout out uh Sky Zoo and all the brilliant things. Uh he is coming. Zoo. We had him last month, I think it was, or maybe in May. He's coming back to talk about this album. So we're going to do a, a kind of a track by track breakdown of the album, really get into it, go in depth. So if you like this album, if you like Sky Zoo, come back uh, next Thursday on Clubhouse this Tuesday. We're going to be talking and chatting uh, about new music. So it's new music Tuesday. My man, Joey Crash, dope DJ. He's putting some mixes together for us, uh, some new music that he's been listening to, all boom bap stuff, of course. So. Uh, come check us out there on Clubhouse this Tuesday at 10. And I want to shout out all the people that tuned in. A lot of people tuning in for you tonight, John Robinson. We appreciate all you uh, tuning in every Thursday. Thank you so much. And I, I know I'm forgetting somebody, but you always forget somebody. I want to shout out, obviously, last but not least, John Robinson. I echo everything everyone said here tonight. Thanks for being here. Thanks for doing what you do. And um, we're going to keep following you, you know, wherever you take us. So really appreciate okay. you being in the driver's seat and, and doing great things in this world. So thank you for being here. And we'll hand it off to you to, to take us out and give your shout outs. Yeah, man, definitely special shout outs to Blue. You know, uh, the, the, the cat on the soundscapes. Um, you know, definitely glad that we put this one in the world and that we connected when we did because I definitely um, appreciate his talent just as a creative period, whether it's emceeing or just chilling, you know what I'm saying? He's just like, he reaps creativity and I'm appreciative of just our connection and how this whole thing came together. So seamless, you know, so big shouts to Blue, big shouts to everyone in the chat for sure. Uh, like I said, Shanika, she shot Ali, Ninth Scientist, Thomas Simmons, uh, Rashu Jima. Anyone that I didn't say, shout outs to you. I see Hector Ortiz, um, Crystal. Yeah, all the peeps in the chat. Thanks for tuning in. And then all the peeps who will see this later. Peace to you as well. 
And I definitely want to uh, big up Jay Rawls, of course. Big up my Science of Life brother, brothers. Big up to myself in a sense of, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to step into these arenas nowadays and really focus more on wanting to share value, but not necessarily value in a sense of, yo, my music's so dope. And the, but value for real that you could take with you and ponder on and, you know, move with and carry with you and unpack later, you know? Um, and, you know, I love the fact that, you know, profound, I said, yo, we got to come back with the notepads. It's like that, I feel like that's part of it. You know, I, I do that to be able to do this. Like I'm always with the notepads and mm -hmm. taking notes and taking things in to share value. And I think it's very important, especially as a hip hop practitioner in the boom bap stratosphere, share value. We need it. We need it to keep us going and keep us fueled. And lastly, but definitely not least, shout out to the boom bap chat brothers, you know, keep this movement alive. You know, um, when I heard there were books, I'm like, yo, of course I want a book. Send me the books, <laughs> you know? So yeah, I, I DM Neville probably like literally right away when he was on, uh, clubhouse saying that but yeah I, i've been able to you know comb through the books and I, I just love the approach and these are the type of conversations that allow us as the creatives to tell our stories directly and speak from the heart and mind directly to the people and anyone out there who's ever supported even by listening to a song or even tapping in right now give thanks to you it's never taken for granted and beyond appreciated right on thank you so much john robinson and on man, that well note, said man well yeah, said well said very yeah. well said and on that note we say peace 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 peace, peace, peace.